Yeah, I guess I don't need a microphone because uh, it's uh, relatively smaller size. Uh, thank you for uh, directing uh, her for the nice introduction. And uh, welcome to Taiwan. Uh, in fact, this is the second time uh, in this, uh, for this kind of workshop. Uh, I didn't have the opportunity, opportunity to join the first one. And I'm very happy to uh, come to the second one. I'm, I'm looking forward to more of this kind uh, of strong activity. Uh, NCTS and here, uh, I think they have uh, uh, both uh, a rather long history. Uh, I remember when I first came to Taiwan, uh, visit Taiwan many years ago, Pierce was uh, first established, uh, was it 98, around 98? 96. 96, yeah. So uh, NCTS was established in 97, so uh, they, uh, they are like uh, brothers. So, uh, uh, I think, uh, I hope, I really hope that uh, we can have a more tight cooperation and collaboration scientifically, geograph geographically, and uh, to make it a more productive environment for Asia. Um, of course, I would like to express my friend to uh, uh, Professor Kiang and Director uh, uh, No, I'm not a oh, <laughs> Professor. <laughs> For bringing this uh, workshop uh, together, people together. Okay. Oh, sorry, I think I decided to use the microphone. Oh. <coughs> it's left back in the back. Left up in oh. <coughs> um, yeah, as uh, NCTS is entering a new phase, uh, this phase will be for another six years. Uh, we will uh, certainly uh, allocate uh, uh, the necessary resources to make this happen, to allow this to happen. Uh, so we are also looking for uh, other opportunities other than joint workshop. Any other opportunities that could uh, uh, realize our dream to make this uh, a fruitful collaboration. Um, so um, during this workshop, I would really like to dis uh, talk to you and uh, get some input on how to make this uh, more fruitful and uh, successful. I guess that's uh, more or less what I want to talk about. <laughs> uh, so let me come to my, my talk. Uh, okay. So uh, I would like to talk about a proposal. Uh, of a cell duality equation for multiple M fibering and its energy momentum tensor. Uh, so this talk. This talk is based on a uh, number of papers I have written uh, in the past uh, two years, and or actually uh, two, uh, more than two years, and some uh, result which I am preparing, uh, which should appear soon. So the plan of my talk, I would like to uh, first give you some motivation. As I understand, not everyone of you are uh, string theorists, so I would uh, start with some motivation why this problem uh, is interesting to uh, string theorists and could be interesting to mathematical physicists, and maybe also for phenomenologists. Uh, and then I will discuss the proposal uh, about this uh, cell duality equation. And then as a consequence of the equation motion, then I would uh, construct a, present you about uh, some solution of this uh, equation. And then uh, this solution, uh, <coughs> as a real volume solution, has some properties which we can check against other construction in string theory. So it is like a consistency requirement that you want this uh, solution uh, to to give you a uh, comprehensive and uh, consistent picture about uh, object in uh, string theory. Uh, in addition, we, I will uh, construct the energy momentum tensor for this uh, theory <coughs> and use that to calculate the energy for this uh, solotonic uh, solution. And then um, from that, uh, we can make a prediction about uh, some properties of this well-worn solution and then uh, some discussion. So <clears throat> uh, everyone know uh, massless uh, speed one particle generate uh, a young mu's uh, gauge symmetry if they are interacting. And this uh, young mu's uh, symmetry describes the uh, observed observe interaction for the standard model. <clears throat> and they are interesting both uh, physically and also for mathematical uh, physics. And ha that has been a subject for uh, differential geometry in mathematics, for example. And it's a natural question to ask uh, if you look at the little group uh, of, uh, of the uh, what, what kind of massless representation you may have and what kind of uh, symmetry you may generate. Uh, for example, 
can can one uh, can one on a BNI can one put the indices A for the metric for example to make this uh, diffusion model uh, some kind of a non abelian non abelian line. Uh, the answer is no. There are many ways you can see that, but I'm not going to discuss it. Um, so there are some rigid uh, requirements from from uh, from the consideration, and in some cases you can do it, and sometimes you cannot. Uh, for tensor gauge invariance, so suppose you generalize your gauge field from a one form to a two form anti-symmetric gauge field, then uh, in the free theory you have this uh, tensor gauge transformation where the gauge parameter is a one form. Uh, one way asked, how can that be, is that possible to generalize it to some non abelian nice uh, tensor gauge transformation? Uh, this is not just uh, interesting for mathematical interest, but it's also uh, interesting for string theory because uh, uh, in string theory we have a, we do have uh, some object which couple to a uh, two form gauge field, just like one particle, a charged particle coupled to one form gauge field. A string is two dimensional, so it has a well shape, two dimensional well shape, which coupled to a two form gauge field. So it's, there's a natural natural uh, question one may ask there, and also even for cosmology, I think some of you are doing cosmology, you can utilize a scalar in uh, uh, and get a B field and. So we may also try to uh, ask this question, is that, is that possible to form a non-abelian scalar theory in terms of some non-abelian two form? Uh, so <clears throat> apart from generalization, generalization of the gauge symmetry, uh, we, we know the one form gauge uh, symmetry has the one form gauge potential as a, uh, as a uh, uh, field strength. And that satisfies a very, very interesting equation called the self view yang equation. Which is important because physically it describes the working structure of gauge theory, and math uh, mathematically this uh, play a very important role in a lot of the differential geometry. <coughs> so the question which I would like to pose uh, to you today is: uh, Suppose we have a two-form, and we would uh, we would like to know if it's possible to generalize the two-form to a some kind of a algebraic valued uh, two-form. So this T A. Is some type of uh, maybe the algebra or maybe some generalization of the algebra. We don't know, but something of this kind is uh, with a field strength which satisfies self duality equation in six dimension. Uh, so my goal would be first to explain whether this is possible to write up such an equation, and uh, in particular, how do you how, how would one define the uh, the field strength for B? So this is uh, for Yang. I remember I, I heard uh, this talk uh, last year. He he said it was a we use we were uh, relieved and surprised for him to get his formula, uh, this formula, dA plus a square. It took him a uh, span of maybe more than five years. When he was a graduate student, he already thought about this question, but then he didn't succeed. And then after many years, he stayed in the office with Mills, and then uh, only then he got uh, the correct answer, this kind of uh, definition of two strength, and everything worked. So we would like to know uh, whether it's possible to generalize this for, for a two-form gauge field, for example. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, we would like to know whether how this equation come up in physics and what does it describe in uh, string theory in particular in this uh, context. Um, so the, the context in which uh, such an equation, self duality equation in six dimension arise is in uh, the description of uh, M fibering. M, M fibering is a, uh, this M here stands for M theory, it's an extension of string theory to 11 dimension. So in in string theory, or in M theory, there are objects, just like in uh, standard model, you have uh, particles. So in, M in string theory, you have objects. These objects are usually extended in dimension. So this M fibering is an extended object with five space and one time dimension. And the, and because it's an extended object, so it has an interesting dynamics on this uh, world volume uh, itself. So uh, out of symmetry argument, many years ago, people knew already uh, the low energy world volume dynamics for a, uh, for a M fibering has to have uh, this amount of super symmetry. So in six dimension, there's a classification of the uh, supersymmetry which one can have. And 2,0 comma zero is a chiral supersymmetry, is the maximal amount of supersymmetry one can have in uh, in six dimension. Uh, and that's a uh, SO5 R symmetry. Uh, and then also uh, the classification also tells us uh, that uh, this 2,0 comma zero, zero uh, supersymmetry has a unique uh, Vector multiplet, which doesn't contain gravity. And the multiplet is called tensor multiplet. It has five scalar and then some fermion, and then it's a self view, uh, preform view strength H. Um, 
So this is just some purely uh, algebraic uh, consideration, symmetry consideration. And of course, uh, one would like to know uh, what kind of uh, uh, equation of motion would that uh, tensor multiplier obey. And many years ago, people have have uh, found the answer already. Uh, uh, for a single m ring, the action or the equation of motion is not. Uh, but then, uh, let, here I have a single single m ring. The situation is like you have an object, which is a, you can imagine this is not just an extended object, like a, like a piece of paper. And you can put many pieces of paper, many m ring together, and you get a multiple system of multiple m ring, so called multiple. And then the interesting thing about this uh, uh, system is that the symmetry and height. So if you have a single m ring, then we know the symmetry is abelian. It's just uh, some you want. But when you put uh, a system, when you put many paper, many uh, systems together, then the symmetry is not just you want to the end, not just you want to the number of uh, paper you put together, but there's some enhancement of symmetry. So uh, the question about what kind of symmetry arise is an interesting question. Also, uh, uh, not just uh, not just uh, physically, but also in, uh, mathematically, as I said before. So we, we would like to know what kind of uh, asymmetry arise for a system of uh, multiple or uh, coincident uh, m fibering, and then and then what kind of uh, dynamics live on this uh, multiple m fibering. Um, this is a simple uh, exercise. So for uh, for a uh, d ring, so in string theory you have uh, d rings, and then in m theory you have uh, m ring. So just uh, just some some terms which I have no time to explain here. But uh, it's the same for d rings. So for rings which satisfy some boundary condition, so called directly boundary condition, we call them uh, d rings. Uh, if you put uh, many rings together, this a signify uh, uh, the, the multiple. If you have um, a number of uh, d rings, the gate symmetry is enhanced from the one uh, for abelian with additional <coughs> term red here to un. And this is what uh, Young and Mills taught us. Right? And for multiple environment, we would like to have a similar story. So we would like to know what kind of additional structure you can put this question mark here, the field string right, uh, and the gauge transformation. Um, for the gauge, uh, for the B-rings, uh, it's interesting that you need an alg algebraic structure determined by the algebra. So it's not clear, I mean, what kind of structure you have to put down here. <coughs> right, so I say, well, it's A. So we don't, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting question to know what that could be. Um, so I think this again. So in this talk, I will just uh, pro uh, explain a proposal about this, answer, this question I have just uh, put to you about what kind of base symmetry should that be and what kind of uh, uh, dynamics. Dynamic forward equation of motion should be uh, should be should govern the dynamics of uh, multiple m fibers. So uh, in in th in this uh, proposal, which I'm going to explain, I will introduce a set of uh, auxiliary fields. So uh, apart from the multiple structure determined by two comma zero supersymmetry, I need to introduce some other field which is not propagating, and these are called auxiliary field in order to uh, to allow me to write down simple equations. Of course, in interval, you can eliminate those few, and then you can write down some complicated uh, equations. But it will be much, uh, you can have a linear representation of the equation if you introduce this kind uh, of series field. There are also other approaches. This is an approach uh, I introduced uh, with my student uh, two years ago. Uh, there are other approaches. Um, for example, these are, well, okay, these are for experiment in this case. If you're really working in the field, then uh, you don't want uh, what I'm talking about otherwise. Uh, I just want to bring out uh, one interesting proposal uh, by Heming here also. Yeah, he has uh, another interesting proposal which uh, is based on a 5D uh, super young mu with uh, kicking modes. Uh, and uh, there are many properties which are similar to the proposal I have. So in some way, uh, I think uh, we can try to uh, see this as a complementary or try to, try to, try to uh, make this description uh, more complete by, by borrowing a feature from each other. Um, and improve the proposal. So let me now explain uh, the proposal. Um, so to explain the proposal for the long abelian uh, case, it's better to explain first the proposal for uh, the construction for the abelian for, uh, for the one for a single m ring. So this is uh, performed by Perry and Schwartz uh, in '96. Um, so the, the main feature of the of the construction is that you have to sac sacrifice uh, Lorentz symmetry. So you, you fix a direction of the six well dimension I, I mentioned. You fix a certain dimension called x five, and then 
and then you do a gauge fixing using the tensor gauge uh, symmetry. You can do a gauge fixing and put this uh, B mu five equal to zero. So the the six by six anti-symmetric uh, B field is now represented by a five by five anti-symmetric uh, B mu nu. And then the self duality self duality equation H to the star H. This is a hot star, right? Basically, it's this, this equation here B by five. And in this case, then you take this form. So it, it's a single derivative of E5 on B mu nu equal to uh, this uh, object here, which I call H tilde. So uh, unlike ordinary equation motion, which are second order, this is a first order equation motion. And also, it, you can see that this equation has a five explicitly here. So Lorentz symmetry, six dimensional Lorentz symmetry involving rotation of the fifth direction are not is not manifest here. Uh, but Perry and Schwartz was able to prove that even though it's not, ma not manifest, but this equation actually is still uh, invariant under some kind of lock deformed or hidden Lorentz symmetry. Uh, the proposal for the Lorentzian is, uh, is a very simple one. So in, you see that uh, in this proposal here, in this uh, equation of uh, Perry and Schwartz, uh, the only, one, only place in which uh, uh, well, you have an H and that this H here, this H involves an uh, ordinary partial derivative of uh, B. So in order to make it non-abelian, uh, we propose to change the partial derivative to a covariant derivative by introducing a set of uh, uh, gauge field. <coughs> and there's no gauge field for, for the fifth because it's, all, uh, it's a special direction we choose. So this is the proposal for the uh, equation motion. So the details, I think, I think uh, there's no point to try to explain every details to you. So I just want to point out the main feature. So uh, this A cannot be a propagating field because it's not allowed, as I said, it's not allowed by 2 comma 0 supersymmetry. So we need to somehow make it auxiliary. So this is the equation which uh, we propose for, um, for the, uh, for the uh, auxiliary condition. So if you this condition, you can interchangeably eliminate A and put it back and then you get some complicated nonlinear equation for the B only. But uh, it's better to write it in this way. So uh, this equation, let me say again, is also very similar to some, uh, it's different but similar to some treatment of auxiliary field in uh, Hining, uh, uh, Passo, and uh, Huang paper. So uh, some properties of this uh, equation. So in principle, you have to solve both equations. Uh, in order to uh, to have a well-defined system, so um, first as a consistency condition, if you go look at uh, a, some diagonal configuration which corresponds to separating the f ring, so uh, then you just get n n copy of the abelian self dual equation, which is expected, and then you get the expected degree of freedom uh, required by supersymmetry, and also uh, this equation we can try to find uh, solitonic solution. Solitonic solution means extended solution with some uh, finite charge and energy, uh, and then uh, and then uh, in particular we have construct some uh, some string solution which carries the uh, self-field charges with respect to the B field. So these are some uh, non-abelian self-field strings, and also some uh, configuration which called M wave. Right? So these can be constructed. So uh, with uh, various collaborator, in particular Isono is here in the audience. So. Um, um, <clears throat> another property of this uh, equation is that uh, if you, as a consistency in uh, M theory, B theory, and string theory, if you compatify the M theory on a circle, uh, the M5 ring, uh, double dimensional reduction, the M5 ring will become a D4 ring. And then at the low energy, we know that uh, D4 ring will be described by, uh, by, uh, by Yamu's theory. And, uh, and then if you include higher, go to a little bit higher energy, then you, in principle, you get a, a non abelian bond in field theory. So, um, so we'd like to know uh, whether this is also reproduced in this uh, setting. This will be an important uh, consistency test. So if you competitify on a circle, then the F constraint, this uh, F constraint, you get a 2 pi R. So we get this form. And then, uh, and then the dialectical equation for the field for F will take this form. So the claim is that uh, this actually corresponds to some high, some, uh, high derivative correction to the Young equation. So the details are, I don't. Uh, I just want to give you an idea without going into the details. So it's like uh, you have this here. You want in this way you can try to solve for the b. Get the b here in terms of f, and you substitute back. Then you can see whether this is some kind of a high derivative correction. So this can be done in two cases, either for the 
one complex one volume. So the uh, the equation can be solved in terms of uh, uh, for example in the lowest order uh, in terms of a covariant covariant derivative expansion. And you get this. Uh, this equation here is very much like if you have a uh, it's a young uh, ordinary Maxwell theory with a constant field strength b magnetic, magnetic field, then you can solve for the potential. So it's uh, it, it's similar to that kind of uh, expansion. And if you substitute this back to the uh, previous equation, the, then you see uh, you get a, a higher derivative correction. One can also sorry, one can also uh, look at the case in which uh, the real volume is a is a torus, then uh, and you expand the covariant uh, derivative in terms of the serial law and then uh, KK mode. Um, so the KK, this is a KK mode covariant derivative, and then you have a serial mode. Then for the vacuum, it's easy to prove from the equation motion. I I wrote down uh, you get the same vacuum as a standard Yang view, and and then uh, on top of the vacuum, so if you treat out. Uh, this is like a uh, perturbative expansion. Uh, if it is a uh, covariant derivative for the KK mode as a expansion, then again you can solve for the B. And then again, then you can see that uh, this is B must is well defined in the KK mode. You can see that this is a kind of a uh, high derivative correction to the Yang. Uh, of course, it's, this is just saying, what well, I did is just uh, saying that uh, this <coughs> equation gives you some high derivative correction. But it doesn't mean I, give, I have reproduced. Precisely the Bonavillian uh, bonding field structure. Actually, we, that is also unknown. So uh, it will be interesting to try to compare this uh, uh, high derivative correction with some uh, result from the string scattering, for example. At least in, the, uh, in some lowest order, we can try to compare and see whether this actually uh, captures uh, the string, uh, is consistent with string computation. About Lorentz symmetry, our uh, system actually only uh, five dimensional Lorentz symmetry is manifest. Uh, unlike the Lorentz uh, abelian case, the full Lorentz symmetry is more subtle. Uh, we, and so far, we have some uh, non local transformation that look like a uh, uh, six dimensional Lorentz symmetry. But the status is not uh, clear because it, it, the, it turns out this transformation is actually quite non local. And the non local transformation uh, as a, I mean, not all, 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 usually we have a symmetry and then we know how to use a symmetry. If the symmetry is local, but it's not local, then it's more sub more subtle. But that's, uh, it's more difficult to understand the meaning whether this is true or not. So uh, I'm not claiming uh, we have a full six-dimensional Lorentz symmetry. Uh, it's a question which uh, has to be studied more carefully. Uh, but it, let me also mention that the local party, but anyway, could be could well be a artifact of the result of gauge fixing, because when you gauge fix uh, a theory, for example, if you look at a bosonic uh, String, uh, and then you do go to light home gauge, and there you find you will find that the Lorentz symmetry also becomes non local. So, what I'm saying is that having a symmetry being non local doesn't uh, a priori rule out the symmetry, uh, rule out the transformation being a symmetry, because there is is a is a is a uh, common feature of uh, gauge fixing. But it doesn't also doesn't mean that having the transformation being we have the symmetry. So I think uh, at the moment uh, it's it's uh, not clear. We still need to. Uh, do more work to fully establish uh, the symmetry. And it's a very important uh, aspect of the proposal. Now, uh, application. The first application is uh, about uh, this uh, real volume solar point. So, um, in, in, the, in the bigger picture, in the, in the uh, space time, you have M theory, then you have uh, brain. Yes, uh, it turns out there are only two kinds of brain which is allowed something called M2 brain and M5 brain. Uh, M2 ring is a small object with two plus one dimension, and then you have M5 ring which is bigger. So it, uh, they can and they can intersect and they can they can play with each other. And one of the configuration they can they can uh, play with each other is that they can end on each other. So uh, I can have M2 ring and then ending on M5 ring, like a uh, like uh, like a <coughs> like a um, perpendicularly, for example. And then the intersection would be. Will be a, a uh, one-dimensional object. The uh, intersection will be the boundary of the M2 ring, so it's a one plus one-dimensional object. So it will appear as a self-due string on the M5 ring. So uh, it, it's a it's a consistency requirement to be able to re reproduce this kind of uh, string configuration as a solitonic uh, solution to the uh, to the M5 ring theory. For the Abelian case, this has been constructed by Perry and Schwartz, and also Carl Lambert. 
And for the Lonavidian case, um, uh, we have we have uh, looked at our equation, and in fact, we can construct this kind of uh, solution. So um, let me just uh, be free. Right? You don't look at you don't need to look at the, this equation. This equation is a equation. You say these are solution obtained by Perry and Schwartz many years ago, and for the B field, and then uh, and then together, there's also a scalar YouTube, which are described the transverse uh, shape of the uh, of the uh, M fibre. So we have field which live on the M fibre, uh, gauge field which describe the uh, the gauge configuration of the M fibre, and then you have also some scalar field uh, which describe the shape trans transverse uh, dimension of the M fibre. So this scalar, so this is the absolute value, which is some gauge variant gauge invariant uh, measurement of the magnitude of the scalar. Uh, if you solve the equation, you find this uh, form. Rho <coughs> is the distance from the so this end on the uh, this string end on the F vibrate uh, at rho to the zero, and then further away you have a you have a polar coordinate which is called rho. So you can see that when rho goes to infinity, then um, phi goes to a constant. So basically that constant is a separation of the two M uh, the, the M M vibrates, and then uh, when rho go to zero, then it blows up. So it's like a, a spike, and then uh, going to the uh, M fiber. So if you imagine this is like a rubber 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 sheet, then you just pull out something from the uh, M fiber, and then you have some smooth funnel shape uh, uh, deformation uh, of the M fiber. The funnel is called the M two brain, and then it ends on the M fiber. So this is the string theory picture of the geometrical object. Uh, of intersection of uh, M2 on M5. That is described by scalar profile of this shape. And beta is here just a constant, turns out determined by the given uh, determined by the charge of the system. So that can that solution can be generalized for the non abelian case. So uh, this is what we want. Uh, you, you get the same one over row square. Uh, and then what is interesting is that you get this uh, N2 M5 dependence. So the N2 is the number of M2 brains and M5 is the number of M5 brains with this uh, particular dependence. So this is uh, something we can try to check against uh, other calculations because of consistency requirement. So the same brain system also live in supergravity. So we can try to uh, try to solve the supergravity equation and then try to reproduce the shape and then from the uh, shape of the supergravity solution extract uh, this dependence. And this has been done uh, at more or less the same time as our paper uh, in 2000, last year. And, uh, we find exactly the same uh, dependence. So this is one uh, one uh, strong evidence that uh, the thing we are considering is uh, probably uh, uh, relevant for M theory. Um, the previous solution was based. On, I didn't explain it, but the previous solution actually was based on this solution here. Was based on having a monopole at the at the center of the spike, and in the in the Abelian case it's a Dirac monopole, and the non Abelian case it's a non Abelian uh, monopole. We are monopole or top monopole. Uh, that can that's, that then that's a natural question. If you replace instead of monopole, uh, you, call, you look at a uh, Yang Yun syndrome because these are two of the most uh, popular configuration, important configuration in the gauge theory. Uh, what happens? If, can you use that to construct a solution in M theory? And then what does that require? So that uh, has been done by uh, Isono and me uh, last year. So the, the the answer is I don't want to go through the detail. The answer is just the B view is. Turns out will be de determined by some self view of equation, which this f here is either self view or self view, depending on whether this function f uh, is is a is a uh, wave propagating to the right or to the left. So at the end, the configuration this to a solitary solution in space time corresponds to having an instanton propagating uh, uh, either in the like for like form or parallel like form. So that precisely. I, I, don't, I, I cannot uh, explain here, but this precisely corresponds to uh, a configuration uh, in uh, M theory called M wave. <coughs> so having a wave uh, propagating on the world volume of uh, multiple vibrations. So now let me come to the energy momentum tensor. I still have uh, 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, in, in general, if I give you a standard, like standard uh, Lagrangian field theory, and it's a simple exercise to do the learner construction, and then you can obtain, because of the transitional invariance of the theory, then you can co construct the canonical energy momentum tensor. Uh, as usual, in a use, uh, in a gauge theory,
cannot find it in one hand, it may not be page memory, and also it may not be symmetrical. So this, these are all standard uh, quantum, field theory, quantum field theory in, in graduate school. So the standard procedure is to uh, so-called make an amendment or make an improvement to the canonical energy momentum tensor to make it uh, symmetrical and gauge memory and also conserve. So this, uh, this amendment is uh, given by uh, a formula, so-called uh, plenty Poisson field uh, formula. So this L has to be is chosen so that it's uh, anti-symmetric with respect to the, to the first two indices. And in that way, um, you can see that immediately the feet are being conserved, uh, allows T to be conserved immediately. So the conservation is uh, guaranteed. So what you need to do is to choose the L such that uh, T is symmetrical and uh, also gauge memory. So in the case when Lorentz symmetry is uh, manifest, uh, actually that's, that's a standard formula. You can write down just like where you do, uh, work on uh, the other procedure. You can you can express L in terms of some derivative of your action and then some Lorentz transformation. So everything can be can be uh, written down explicitly uh, in the standard case. But in the case when Lorentz symmetry is not manifest, so suppose I give you a gauge theory, gauge fix, and then ask you to construct the any one tensor for that gauge fix theory, uh, that will not be the same story because the formula wouldn't be a, you wouldn't be able to apply. So this is actually the case uh, we have here. So we have. Uh, write down our proposal in the gauge fix uh, uh, framework. So we couldn't apply any of this machinery. So we need to look for a different uh, construction. So the construction is, uh, the different construction actually was inspired by uh, Lambert and West for the Abelian case. For, for, for the expert, Lambert and West uh, many years ago, they have uh, some efficient motion coming from super embedding approach, uh, not from a Lagrangian approach. So they also have to phrase the problem how to construct any two one tensor. So uh, the, the way they, they do it is just to impose symmetry, basically. The field has some gauge symmetry, and then uh, so they try to write down the most general uh, form of uh, any one tensor that is compatible with the gauge symmetry of the theory, and also uh, uh, conservation law and being symmetrical. So at the end, they were able to write down the unique any two moment tensor, and then check it against uh, other construction, for example, uh, so-called PST construction. Uh, so here we will try we will try to follow the same uh, idea of number of words, and without giving you the details, so we will impose that uh, this requirement, and then in addition we will impose a requirement that uh, our t is only quadratic up to quadratic uh, in in the field string, and we get a unique uh, expression. Uh, this ex this uh, expression here, this alpha is a, uh, is a constant which has we have, we will fix uh, later. Uh, by uh, consistency requirement. So if we just impose the symmetry, of course, you, always, you can always have an arbitrary constant. But so if given by HH, this HH is the standard way any one tensor you, you will have in the abelian case, just like FF for gauge, uh, young is gauge theory. And then you have also some additional term uh, given by this. So uh, yeah, so the details, I, I don't want to uh, uh, go into the details, but uh, so we have some W and some uh, trace. Okay, now we can use this to uh, to compute, okay, uh, so two more remarks. So in the abelian limit, the W will vanish, and then your T, our T will reduce to the standard one, and also our n one tensor is, well, we spec scale memory. If you take a trace, actually you take this form, and with a real curve. So this is also required. You don't have to have a T which is traceless in order to have scale memory. It's enough to have uh, something like this with a scale, uh, real curve. <coughs> uh, okay, so now we can apply it to, uh, to our system. So first we apply it uh, to the non abelian uh, self field string and uh, to calculate, uh, calculate the energy. So first of all, uh, since the energy uh, we are calculating is for a system of M2 ring, N1 and five ring, and the M2 ring is extended infinitely throughout infinity, it's a spike. So you can expect the energy will be infinite. So the proper way to do it is not to calculate the energy, but the energy, P0 here, divided by the length, and then by, by the D. So this length and D here, I, I have to explain. One, well, one of the length is the length in the uh, transverse direction, right? So we have to divide uh, that length. And that, the, the other length is uh, actually our solution is actually constructed to be translational invariant in one of the transverse dimensions. So that is uh, that is just a dimension emission solution it doesn't depend on. So we also have to divide that. So this is the energy per unit length, uh, per unit area, yeah, of uh, of the of the self string. And then you find this uh, particular uh, form. 
So I have, uh, a, I mean, the dimensionable quantity will be absorbed in the Q0. So here I just display, uh, concentrate on the dependence on the uh, charges on the number of M2 ring, N2, and the N5. And uh, we found this uh, interesting behavior. Uh, for the large M, large number of M5 ring, we, we find that the dependence depends on N5 in this way to the four power. So the, uh, the de dependence on N2 is uh, linear. That is quite easy to understand because that's just the number of M2 ring you have. Right? The more M2 ring, you, you get more energy. So you can also, you may as well divide the N2 on the other side. But the N5 is more interesting. The N5 is the number of uh, M5 ring in which the M2 ring and on. So that also affects the energy. Uh, it, will be, it will be quite very interesting, I think, to check this dependence uh, from supergravity. So uh, we haven't done it, but I think it's doable. You can, uh, one can try to find uh, a solution. The solution is already constructed by people, as I said, and check against our, uh, our solution. So one can, based on that solution, we can compute the energy. Uh, from the supergravity, check it. Uh, on the M wave, uh, so, uh, we find this uh, result. So uh, the micro momentum, uh, for example, for the self view instanton case, the, the micro momentum, which is proportional to the instanton charge, the number of instanton, and uh, uh, some k, which depends on the profile of the two, uh, or the amplitude of the of the wave. So this is again expected. Because, uh, N dependent is expected because. Uh, if you dimensional reduce the system to uh, uh, to D4, then the M wave corresponds to just a D0 brain. So of course the momentum in that case corresponds to the number of D0 brain. So um, so this is also uh, we, this feature is also reproduced. Now let me uh, summarize. Uh, our our original motivation was to understand whether there's an extension of the self duality equation from four to six dimension uh, to the equation like this, and and uh, I've given you such a proposal. Um, uh, for this uh, equation, and I also I have also constructed a solution based on different configuration of the uh, auxiliary gauge field, uh, monopole or instanton. They correspond to M2 ring, uh, ending M5 ring. This uh, spike or uh, M wave. And also I've con computed uh, energy uh, for each of these uh, system. For the M2 ring case, uh, we find an N N5 to the fourth dependent. Uh, and then for the M wave, we find something already we can account for. So uh, for the M2 ring case, it will be uh, interesting to try to understand this uh, dependence, independently. Uh, of course, there are uh, 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 many outstanding <coughs> questions, uh, apart from the Lorentz symmetry, which I have uh, mentioned. Supersymmetry is important. Uh, basically, what I have done so far, I have skipped the hard problem about supersymmetry. Uh, and that is also, of course, very important. Supersymmetry usually uh, is strong enough so that uh, you have only one construction. And because you have only one construction, if you are able to do it with together supersymmetry, then that means you are, you are done. So uh, <coughs> that will be the final uh, goal to complete uh, uh, the theory of supersymmetry. But then the question is whether you want 2 comma 0, which is what we expect, or 1 comma 0. Uh, based on a lot of uh, experience uh, working with uh, brain, in particular, in particular with uh, M2 brain, people knew that sometimes it is not possible in a Lagrangian theory to represent the full supersymmetry of the field. So this is a story of uh, ABGM. So um, so in our case, it may be possible that uh, it's likely that uh, we, we can only represent 1 comma 0 supersymmetry in 6 dimensions instead of 2 comma 0. So this is something uh, uh, I've, I've been working on recently with uh, some, some expert in supersymmetry. But also there are some uh, in painting uh, work uh, with 5 dimensional uh, field, and it's a uh, easier in that case to construct supersymmetry. So they have already succeeded to compute the supersymmetry in terms of five dimensional field. But then of course in that framework then one has to uh, uh, to see whether the supersymmetry actually could be correspond to super uh, the six dimensional uh, supersymmetry with the Lorentz symmetry. So that's another so uh, so some in some formulation you have some easier thing to do uh, but then some other difficult question. So different aspects. Uh, uh, further question um, so I think these are for <coughs> I, don't, I, I think I should uh, skip it. So um, that's uh, will be my uh, end of my talk. Thank you. Questions from my audience? Uh, yes. So there was this paper by Gaioto, Kapustin, Seiberg, and Brian Willer last week that uh -huh. generalized global symmetry. Uh -huh. So on very general ground, you can argue that if you consider a higher form 
global symmetry must be abelian. Uh -huh. But the, on the other hand, we also want to have a non-abelian uh, gauge two-form symmetry for the M5 branch. So are we saying that um, that non-abelian two-form gauge symmetry cannot be uh, coming from uh, higher form global symmetry? Uh, first, I haven't read the paper, so I cannot comment. But uh, yeah, I think uh, that's a possibility. But the argument is very yeah. simple, you know, because the higher form sim uh, symmetries are associated to um, extended objects. Uh -huh. So if you want to surround it with a higher co-dimension uh -huh. manifold, <laughs> then you can uh, move around the higher co-dimensional manifold uh -huh. uh, in, in your space without running into each other, unlike uh -huh. the co-dimensional one case. Yeah, I mean, you have some geometrical picture, which yeah, I don't yeah. understand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm very, always very skeptical about very simple arguments. And if you find the history, there are a lot of uh, cases. People argue for something, and then it's wrong. Uh, famously, for example, uh, John Swartz, uh, argue there's some local theorem for construction of uh, M2 brain uh, on a billion, yeah, and it's wrong. So there all there could be always something missing. I'm not saying this is correct, yeah. But uh, I, until uh, we, so I think uh, I'm this simple argument about how okay, maybe for mathematician it's enough to have some smoothness, and but for physicists sometimes we often allow for some singularity, which is also okay. So I don't know. The, uh, I would still keep a skeptical. Uh, 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 Perspective about this. Uh, I, I, of course, I have to read the paper first. Yeah. Well, the function will be four kind of non-linear. So maybe they don't exist. So that's the other half. That's the other half of the, the paper. Of the, the uh, all right. So maybe we should keep the uh, schedule. Uh, thank the Chongqing for that.